Yes. Yes, Lord.
Today, God, I claim my wholeness. I need you, God, to reach back and touch the three-year-old me, the five-year-old me, the six-year-old me, yes. the ten-year-old me, God. Yes. Everybody left me and I was crying, God. I've been operating out of fear. I've been operating out of rejection. I've been operating out of time. My mother broke my heart and my father broke my heart and the church broke my heart. I'm ready to be whole. Yes. I'm ready to be healed. I'm ready to be free. imagination and our mindset and thinking things in the atmosphere. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I know we everybody ain't on that level, but you're gonna get on that level today. Yes. Like you know why God told me this church ain't full? He said y'all don't see it full. Mm. Come on, come yeah. on, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. So true. He said he told me, Doug, he said if you want to see it full, then see it full. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He says, see it before you see it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I started imagining that gym back there for him. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. See, see, if you're going to really walk by faith, you got to start seeing things before it's seeable. Thank you you got to start believing it before yeah. it's believable. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Some of y'all got to ask God to increase your faith. Mm. Because our faith frustrates God. Yeah. yeah. It don't move him. But I'm ready to stress God out and cause him to move. Yes. Some of y'all, you need to start speaking to houses and properties. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father God. That's Thank it. you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. I know you think you got to speak to your husband and your wife, but some of y'all, you see, they went and spied out the land. You got to start claiming territories. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm ready to preach this word. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You, are y'all ready? Yes. Now, I, I want to bring some clarity real quick, because last Sunday, everybody was mad at me. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And I just wanted to, Christy, get your phone out real quick, because I will never preach my opinion. Amen. I will right. only preach the word. Right, right. Amen. Yeah. Now, the word will get you frustrated sometimes. Uh -huh. It won't cause you to have fear, but it will frustrate mm -hmm. you. 
And the reason it frustrates you, and I'm going to preach about this a little bit today, it is because the spirit don't want to let you go. Right. Yeah, that's it. It is irritating that spirit. That's why when you leave, you hot. Right. Right. If I preach the word and it makes you hot, it's a spirit that don't want to let you go. Yeah, that's Amen. it. Amen. Now, I preached some things that made y'all mad, and I'm just going to bring some clarity, and then we're going to preach this next sermon. Okay? Let's, let's go to... Um, so I started talking about being prepared before service. Do y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Cindy, you were in here. Chris, you was in here. Yeah, and y'all remember how I started talking about being prepared before service? Right. And I said, what was the scripture I used? Study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto who? Unto God. Unto God. God. You want me to tell you why it frustrates you to get prepared? You ain't doing it for God. Right, so, right. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Study to show yourself approved of the who? God. God. The, God. the reason it irritates you when I ask more out of you, your motive ain't right. Right, right. Because if you was doing it for God and I'm asked more out of you, then why does it bother, bother you? you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Yep. The reason it gets you mad when I ask you to be prepared to do worship is because you ain't doing it right. right. If your heart was for God, you wouldn't mind studying to show yourself approved. Exactly. If I told you I was going to give you a million dollars every Sunday to learn a new song, you'd be cool with it. Right, 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 right. Yep. That's Come on, let's be real. Amen. Let's be real. Let's be real. Yep. Let's be real. Let's be real. If I told you every Sunday you had to learn one song and I would give you a million dollars every Sunday, how many of y'all in here could learn right. a new song every Sunday? Right. Yes, <laughs> Lord. Every Sunday, all you got to do is learn one new song and I give you a million. Right. Come on, study right, to show yourself right. approved under God. Is your motive right? Yeah. Right. If your motive is right, then it won't frustrate you when the leader asks more out of you. Right. Come on, somebody. They said, I'm too rude. Jesus, the, the, uh, God said in the Bible, let me tell you how God said it. So you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at God. He said, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Right. Mm. Mm. Sluggard means lazy. Mm. He said, go to the ant, thou sluggard, and consider her ways and be wise. Mm. Which having no overseer or ruler prepares their meat in the summer for the winter. Uh -huh. So in other words, the ant prepares all summer long Jesus. just for a winter opportunity. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. You get mad when I ask you to get prepared. It's because you got a lazy spirit on you. Come on. Go to the ant. Mm. All right. Come on. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I, I'm just preaching out the word. Jesus, God said this. Yeah, yeah. He said, Thou slug, consider her ways and be wise. The ant prepares all summer just for a winter moment. Mm. All right. That's so good. Okay, so yeah. since y'all mad at me about asking y'all to be prepared to sing the song, just go look at the ant. Right, go right. Study the ant right. Because right God's about to use the ant more than you. Right. You're willing to get prepared for what God's about to do in your life. Amen. Mm. Okay. Amen. So I know you may have to go to the scripture. And, and it's in the Bible. Is it in the Bible? Come on, Ray. It's in the Bible. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. I'll give it to you. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. So go to the end. I'll start when I ask you to do more. Because God's getting, trying to get you prepared. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Be honest. Say that good man and, 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 and guess the song. Come on. And, 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 and she knows exactly when to say drop it like it's hot. She prepared that. She rehearsed that. Right. Come on. Right. She got faith on that level and she trying to make money off you and she gonna charge you a hundred dollars to tell you to drop it like it's hot. Right, and right. you get mad because I tell you to get ready for Come church. On. Come on, somebody. Come on now. Okay, so true. And, and and let's do another scripture because I know y'all was mad. I started talking about if you want influence and, and fix your husband food. Right. <laughs> and all the way I wanted to just vote me on. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody got mad at me because I was saying, woman, go make your husband some food. Go to Proverbs real quick, 31 and 15. Just so you know I'm in the Word. Right. Just so you know I'm in the Word. Because I don't preach off the Word. I don't preach my emotions. So give me Proverbs 15, uh, Proverbs 31 and 15. Because y'all mad at me because I told you if you want to influence your man to feed him. Come on. Amen. 
Come on, give me, give, give it to me. Now, if, now, if this is a make believe woman, then y'all let me know. But it's in the word. Go to Proverbs thirty one and fifteen real quick, because y'all y'all act like I be living the women. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, y'all act like I be living the women. No, I'm trying to teach you how to have influence over territories. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you read Proverbs thirty one, this lady had influence over cities. Mm. She had influence. You asking God for influence, but your house is out of order. Come on, mm. come on. Ooh, oh, get on. Go ahead. <laughs> Say that again. Say it again. You want God to send you to the world, and you got an ant bed in your back seat. Come on, come, come on. on. <laughs> ant bed is because you got suckers you don't clean up from the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now you, now you, now you. you want God to give you influence in the world. That's it. Come on, let's be real. That's it. You want influence in the whole world, and your own house is out of Right. And your car looks like Sanford and so Right. But you, you ain't got to take you internationally. <laughs> The only thing that can flow out of you is what's already in you. God can only multiply who you are. You can't take an orange tree and take it an apple tree. Yeah. When you Come have on. all these prophetic dreams about cars, yeah, cars is your ministry. Right. So if you want it about your ministry, look at your car. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on now. Jesus, see, I'm going to be real with y'all. And y'all can all hate me, but I'm trying to get you. You want influence to get influence in your house. Right. Get your house in order. Because right. all God's going to do is multiply your personal life. Yes. Play with me. Yeah. Play with me. I know y'all gonna all leave, but somebody gonna come back and say you need to go listen to that man. Right. Get yourself up, fix me up all this sandwich. God wants to use you. <laughs> you looking at food as the wrong through the wrong lens. Right. When Jonathan ate the food, when Saul told him he couldn't eat it, the Bible says his eyes got strengthened. Mm. 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 See, you look at food as entertainment. Right. But healthy people look at food as empowerment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm yeah. Up in this house. Yeah. yeah. You look at food as entertainment. That's why on your lunch break we we spend all day in the water burger line. Right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Watch this. I'm finna help you. Yeah. So you spend thirty minutes in water burger line to go back to, not to get a lunch break. Yeah. 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 But if you were prepared for the lunch, lunch break, break. Oh. Yeah, yeah. you could use, use the lunch break, break to build energy yeah, yeah. and be effective for the last three hours of the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to spend no 30 minutes in line for Whataburger. I only got 30 minutes right. anyway. Right, right. So I used the 30 minutes to eat the bony sandwich to drop yeah, energy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I can be an effective leader, not a tired leader, yeah, yeah. not a sad leader, not a depressed leader, not a mad leader. Yeah. I ain't got time to cuss you out because you ain't got my meal ready. My wife got it ready. Yeah. I got people to leave. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. You're looking at food through small lenses. Right, right. Healthy people look at it as empowerment, yeah. energy, resources, and you looking at it as entertainment. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Come on, I'm just trying to give y'all influence. Because you want God to send you all over the nation and you spend your whole lunch break in Waterburger line and then you come back mad and you want to be a great leader. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eat a bologna sandwich on lunch, spend time with God. Come on, yeah. Great yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. So that when the people that cuss you out at work, okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't think I don't get cussed out. You crazy. I got all kind of haters and demons and witches, but I spent time with God. Man. It's time to spend time with God. Right, right. Okay. Amen. Okay, so y'all think I ain't in the word when I said make your man a meal. Go to Proverbs 31 to 15. And it's, this is what it says. So this is what the word says. So get mad at God. Okay. She gets up while it is still daylight. No. No. Well, it's night. Why well, it's night. She provides what? Y'all ain't even read it. Y'all so mad at Food me. for her family. She provides food. <laughs> Y'all oh. mad at me. That's okay. <laughs> food for her family. <laughs> food for she her family. She provides food for her what? Family. Family. Mm-hmm. She considers a field. And buys it. Mm. Buys it. Lord, thank you. So she goes from making a hamburger for her husband Come on now. to have an influence over her own house to buy a, a field. field. Mm. So I didn't see nowhere where she got her husband's permission to buy the field. Right, right. The food gave her permission. Come on. Come on. Come on. Getting up That's every true. morning at 6 a.m. gave her permission to buy the house. Right, 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 right. 
That's it. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Mm. Mm. So in other words, she got a staff. That Come on staff. now. Okay, golly. So y'all mad. I know y'all mad. Read all of Proverbs 31 <laughs> whenever you got spare time. If you want influence. If you don't want influence, just take that out of your Bible. <laughs> I'm trying to give y'all influence. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, now, if you want to be the uh, person at your job that, that always has a boss that tells you what to do, that don't apply these scriptures. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have a teenager get straight out of college and tell you what to do and don't have a clue about the whole company. Wow. And you've been there for five years, but you won't let God fix your little areas in your life. You know how to run the company, but now you got to teach him how to do it because your attitude's in the way. Right. You know how to run the whole company, and now you got to teach your little college student how to run the business right. because your attitude's in the way. Mm. I ain't teaching you how to take my position. If God's calling me to do it, then get out the way. Right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Are y'all ready for me to preach the word? So I, if, if, I, if I offended y'all, I offended y'all. But like I said, if it offended you, it's because the spirit don't want to turn you loose. Mm. And the devil is mad because you get ready to take over regions and territories. But I'm telling you, if you'll try these principles for just a year, watch and see if influence don't just manifest in your life. Right. Watch and see if God don't use you to influence your husband. And y'all remember I said the husband is a leader mm. and women like leadership. Y'all remember that? Yep. The Bible teaches us that the man is the head of the house. Yep. Does it not? Yep. So I said, y'all men, if you want your wife to cook a meal, then get up and lead. Get yep. up and pray. Get up and intercede. Get up and speak in tongues. Don't get up and listen to Beyonce. If you're going to listen to Beyonce, I'm not making you a baloney sandwich. Right, right, Come right. On. Women like leadership. Women like leadership. Women like leadership. So if you want a baloney sandwich, then lead. If you want a baloney sandwich, then pray for my house. Pray for these kids. Don't be on Facebook scrolling all the time. Study. Get something going for this family. Set it off. Do something. Move yeah. in action. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Leave my family to church. Don't make me be the one waking y'all up to go to church every Sunday. Don't make me be the one waking you up to go to school. Come on. If you don't want a sandwich, then be a leader. Wake the kids up. Wake the dog up. Wake the cat up. Get everybody ready. Set it off. Bust the move. Come on. Somebody be a leader. Wait yeah. want you to lead. I don't want to babysit you. I want to see if you're looking at Beyonce's rear end. I want to see if you're in the Bible. I want to see if you're in the Word. And then I will make you a bologna sandwich. And if you keep acting right, I'll put the right amount of mayonnaise and mustard on yeah. it. But if you fool with me, I'm going to give you a dry sandwich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Numbers 13, it's time for preaching. And when the church grows and it is going to grow, y'all going to need to give me some security guards. Yeah. Jesus, I'm going to preach the Word. Yeah. I'm going to preach the Word. Thank you, Jesus. I'm realizing now why churches that grow have security guards. Because if you're really preaching the word, you're going to make some people laugh. Right. I'm talking about the real word. I ain't here to be your best friend. Right. I'm telling you, I'm not here to be your best friend. I'm here to make you grow and be all God called you to be. Yeah. That's why folks yeah. get mad at me at work because I'll run smack up in your face. Oh, yeah. If I don't say nothing, then shame on me. Right, right. If I'm the leader, then I'm the leader. Come on. Yeah. If I ain't got the courage to say nothing, then sit me down. Right. Amen. Okay, I know Cynthia got my back. Thank yeah. you. She's from Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> show me state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you about it and show you later. Come right, on. right. Thank you, Jesus. Is that the show me state? Which one's the show me state? It's we close to it. What's Chicago? <laughs> What's, what's Chicago? Chicago's Windy City. Windy City, without the Holy Ghost. Too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, so I won't preach long. So we're going to talk about imagining uh, things into existence today. And I know that sounds deep and spiritual, but some of y'all, you want me to tell you why you don't own a house? You had not imagine yourself in a house. Right. right? Yeah. You ain't even seeing yourself in it. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. When I was, how old was I when we bought the first house? Like 24? I don't know. I was young. I was young. 25 when we bought our first house. Mm -hmm. Guess what? My dad didn't co sign with me. He was dead. Right. My mama didn't co sign with me neither. I made $11.50 an hour. But I started going to these real estate companies that said, I want to buy a house. They said, Doug, if you're going to buy a house, you got to take classes. 
Mm. Well, I ain't got the stuff you need. So I said, all right, let's take some classes on the weekend. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Let's, let's take classes. Come on, if you want it, you got to go after it. Yeah. Yeah. You're praying for these mailbox blessings and they ain't going to happen. Right, right, Come right, on. right. Come right. on, somebody. Come on. 25 bought my first house. Sold it when I was 30, made 40000 off of it. Bought the next house, made 300000 off of it. Come on, somebody, somebody said, work that thing. Work that thing. And you want a mailbox blessing. No, 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 no. You don't need no mailbox. You need to go work that thing. Yeah. All right. Numbers 13. I know you, man. Give me number 13. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Joseph come up to me and he said, my wife made me a sandwich today. <laughs> I'm serious. Y'all think it's petty. But God uses small stuff to influence big things. Yeah. Okay, okay, so y'all don't believe me. What about the boy that had the two fish and the five loaves? Oh, yeah, bread? yeah. He, had, he was the only one out of thousands of people that had his lunch prepared. Right, Ooh, yeah. Right. <laughs> one little boy had his lunch prepared. He was ready for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And God used one little bag of bread, one little bag of preparation to influence 5,000 men. Mm. Mm. Go ahead and keep uh, standing water bar the line. I'm trying to get you <laughs> Now I'm serious. I'm trying to get y'all ready. Yeah. Because we Amen. want everything to be spiritual. You want me to tell you why we want everything to be spiritual? Because you ain't got to do it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. As long as it's spiritual, you can wait on God. Right. But everything ain't spiritual, baby. Right. Right. Some things are practical. Right. And then God puts it supernatural on his on your practical. Yeah. See, we we like to I believe in God for this and I believe in God for that. But the Bible says faith without works is dead, being alone oh, in itself. Yeah. Faith without works is being dead. Yeah. So you believe in God for a house, then I need to be able to sit down and have a meeting with you and ask you, what are you doing to get the house? Right, yeah. right, right. Come on. Yep. Come on. Yeah. Why well, believe in God for a house? Well, what are you doing to get the house? Why well, believe in God for a million dollars? Well, I need to ask you, what is your vision to get the million dollars? Right. If you believe in God for a million right now, then I need you to take your piece of paper that you got with the vision on it and show it to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then show me steps. Show me progress. Show me where you was three months ago and show me where you are now. Show me what you did to make the dream happen. Yeah. Stop praying for mailbox blessings. I will cut your mailbox down with a Come chainsaw. On. <laughs> it ain't coming through the mailbox. Right, right. Faith without works is dead. Don't nobody know you. You might get an Amazon package sitting you on an accident and that's God testing your character. They yeah. put you back, don't belong to you. Right, right. I remember that? Jason said after the service last week, he said, I got a free can of Coke from the store. But the Holy Spirit said, go back in the store and pay for it. You remember yeah. that? Yep. You thought the woman accidentally didn't scan it. No, it was God testing your spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all know Jason is anointed to drink Coke. <laughs> that was a breakthrough for him. Right, right. But the Holy Spirit said, go back and pay for the Coke. And the cashier said, why in the world would you come back and pay and we don't even know? Come on. God knows. I'll say God I'm knows. I'm in the Word. He said, because of God, influence. Yep. Jesus. Come on. He who is faithful over a few, a few things. things. Okay, now I'll make you rule him. All right, so I'm talking way too much, but I'm telling you, I'm in the Word. 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 When I'm preaching real good, it's going to frustrate you. It's going to get on your envelope and nerves because spirits are loosening your mind. Spirits are letting go of you. And you're getting ready to take over territory. If it don't make you mad, then go to another church. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go. Numbers 13, I'm ready. Okay, let's see. Look, we need to start way on down now because I talk way too much. It's already 11 20. Cowboys playing today, Pat? We all are Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Now, I don't know how to pronounce all these words, and it, it ain't because I don't study. It's just my, my, my mind don't do it right. Thank you, Jesus. But I will try. I'm like Moses. I'm anointed to stutter and lead at the same time. Thank you, Jesus. But I'm not going to let my ability stop his ability. All right, so we're going to read where they spied out the promised land. So y'all know the text. You know the text where they spied out the promised land. Y'all all safe. Okay, are y'all ready? They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. 
There they reported to them and to the whole assembly. Now see, that's where Moses less, let, he messed up, the whole assembly. Because you ain't supposed to tell yeah. your business to everybody. That's right. right. That's where he messed up right there. Right. Don't tell your business to everybody. And another place he messed up is he let too many people take lead, but I ain't gonna talk about that today. He chose out too many leaders. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes there's too many chiefs. Mm. I need some Indians. I need somebody to clean the commode and say, yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, then they reported to them, and the whole assembly showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us. And it's true. It does flow with milk and honey. It's big. It's blessings. It's, it's got your breakthrough. It's got everything God promised. Here is its fruit. But look at this. But the people who live there are powerful. Mm. And the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites live in the Negev, I guess that's how you said. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live there near the Sea of Jordan. Look, look at Caleb. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses. Mm. So basically he said, shut up. Mm. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Y'all want everybody to be nice and that's what's wrong with you. You need everybody to be nice. You don't need everybody to be nice. You need some leaders in your life. They can tell you like a T.I. is. <laughs> then Caleb silenced the people. In, in, in other words, he said, shut your mouth. Mm. Because sometimes it is your mouth that is holding you back from your promises. We should go up and take possession of the land, for we are certainly able to do it. Look at the level of faith. Before they even fought, he already had the confidence they could do it. Right. But the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Mm. In other words, that's too big of a task for me. Right. They spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there of, of a great size. We saw the, how you say that, Chrissy? Nep something. Nep something, whatever there. Yeah, the, the sense of Anak are there. We seem like, look at this, like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we look the same to them. Now, hold on. How do you know how they view you and right. you're scared to even talk with them? Come on. How do you know your enemy views you as a grasshopper and you ain't even got the courage to talk to them? Yep. Some of y'all operate off false revelation. Mm. You walking off a revelation that ain't even reality. Right. They said they saw us as grasshoppers. Wait a minute, they never seen them. You never even talked with these giants. Right. You are operating off a of false revelation. You are greater than you think you are. Mm. There is a great anointing in your life. But you view yourself as small and petty. Jesus. Come on. And unable. That's why God's not taking you to the next level. See, God's been dealing with me about this. Because I feel, I look at myself too small. And I look at myself too petty. But God this week, he started saying, I need you to start seeing things before they happen. Mm. He said, I need you to see this church. Because I'm going to be real true. I don't only see it full. I see it empty and then go home and cry about it. Mm. But God convicted me this week and he said, it's your fault. You need to see it before it happens. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I want to preach real quick and I promise I won't be long. I want to preach today from a subject, take your territory. Mm. Amen. Because it is time to take it. It ain't just going to happen. Right. And, and I want to look at this text before I pray because some of us are spectators. All right. And not participators. Yeah. See, a spectator can see the promises of God, but never pursue them. Mm. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. In other words, you can see the promises of God in somebody's life, but never pursue it. Never invest. Never fully commit. Never fully go after it. So you are a spectator. Spectators get on Facebook and scroll down all day. And you look at posts, but you never like them. Right. Wow. You look at what I'm doing in this church. But you never send a dollar. Jesus. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Come on. You look at what I'm doing and you like the post. Well, no, you can't like the post because you don't want me to know that, that you like me. You are a spectator. 
Come on, somebody, let's be real. All right, watch this. If you can scroll all day on Facebook and never like nobody's post and never share it, you a spy. You a spectator. If you scrolling all day, what is your motive to scroll? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why are you looking at another man's ministry if you ain't no share the post? Right. <laughs> Why are you looking at the ministry if you ain't going to like it? Why are you looking at it if you ain't going to pursue it? See, a lot of times you're looking at it, your motive is wrong. You're looking at it to see if they got the numbers. You're looking at it to see if the church is growing. And God said, I want you to share the post. I want you to like it. But you are a spectator. But I'm sick and tired of speculating stuff. Right, I'm going right. to in the grace yeah. of God. If I'm yeah. going to be here, I'm going to be here. Yeah. If I'm going to look at the post, I'm going to like the post. Yeah. If I'm going to listen to the word, I'm going to share the word. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We've got to get over the spectator spirit. If you can scroll and look at my business and never like it, then something's wrong with that. Right. Come on. Yeah. Buy a piece of furniture one day. Come on. Come on. I'll ship you a piece of sawdust. Yeah. <laughs> Bag of it. <laughs> you a spectator. All right. Come on, somebody. All right. If you want to make it to the NBA and all you do is look at YouTube videos right. and don't never go out and practice, you are a spectator. Right. It ain't gonna happen. Kobe Bryant practiced for what 10 to 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. What Come on. Come on, I'll get you some sawdust today. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. By the gram. Come on. I sell it by the gram, by the ounce. I'm telling Come you, on, I ain't turning nothing down. <laughs> I'm going to be everything God's called me to be. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. On. yeah. Come on. Hallelujah, God. I'm sick of being a spectator. Right. When is the last time you liked somebody's post? Right. When is the last time you shared this post? Right. Oh. You want the blessing of God to fall in your life and you want him to share this old hill building preacher with slobber out my mouth. You want God to bless your little LLC, Limited Liability Corporation, and you ain't even got it on the paper yet. Right, right, right. I got this stuff on paper. We are branded church. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. God bless my LLC and you want him to share my LLC. Right. I'm ahead of you. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we got to pray because I'm feeling kind of churchy in my soul. Father, preach through me because you already know I can't do it. You already know I'm crazy, strange, and just crazy as they make it, God. I ask you to have your way in here, God. Move in this place. God, even though I'm crazy, I am believing that you can release the supernatural favor of God. I am believing, God, together as a family that you can release an anointing that will destroy the yoke. I am asking you, God, to release fat favor and an imagination, God, so we can take over cities and take over malls and take over regions and take over territories. God, increase our faith today. I don't want to be a spectator another day. God, if I'm going to look at the post, let me like the post. If I'm going to look at the land, then let me take the land. If I'm going to look at the business, let me support the business. If I'm going to go to church, God, then let me be a part of the church. Let me be a participator, not a spectator. I'm ready to walk in the anointing of God. In Jesus' name. Can y'all give me praise? Yeah. Okay, so Jason, real quick, I want to talk about these three S words. And I don't know how organized it's going to be, but it's going to be good. Now, 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 these are like cuss words in church. So I want to talk about spectators for a minute, which we just did. Now, this word, I don't even know if I should say this right, because this is like a, a cuss word, like of all cuss words. I want to talk about submission. Mm. Now, that is a cuss word in the church. Okay? I want to talk about separation, and I want to talk about being stretched. Mm. Because if you're going to walk in the promises of God, you gotta you got to have a submissive spirit. Yeah. Come right. on, they were submitted. Joshua and Caleb were submitted to this vision. Yeah. And I'll give you scriptures. Yeah. And then you're going to go through a season of separation. In other words, God's going to take the negative people out of your life yeah. so you can pursue the promised land. Yeah. Did y'all know that God did not let these spies go into the promised land? Mm. He let all of them die. Yeah. He let all of them die. 
Because you cannot have a negative mindset and go into the places that God wants you to go into. Yeah. Because if you have a negative mind and he takes you there, all that you're going to do is uh, get more people negative. Right. Yeah. Come on. Because yeah. one of the callings on your life when you are called by God is God gives you influence. Yes. Jesus. Yes. So in order for God to really promote you, he needs your mind to be able to be placed on somebody else's mind. Right. Come on. All God does when he calls you is he gives you influence. Yeah, yeah. And then he gives you resources. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I always got people asking me to send them money all the time. All the time. All the time. But I need to know if I'm going to send you the money, are you responsible with the money you have now? Right. right. See, because as a leader, I am responsible for the money. Amen. And if I just send it out and jack leg it, God will shut it down. Mm -hmm. That's why we ain't in a big building right now. I'm not getting nothing that it ain't time for. Come on. I'm going to stick with the 40 right now and save the money. Right. Come right, on. right. Okay. All right, y'all ready? Have your way, God, in Jesus' name. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Let's go. If you're going to possess the land that God has promised you, you have to have a positive mindset. Yeah. Because the first thing you're going to have to overcome is negative thinking people. Mm. Yes. And God put this word in my spirit, cantankerous. Y'all need to look that up. Cantankerous people, they are negative people and they find something wrong. With everything. Everything. With everything. Contained. If you're going to walk in your purpose, you got to have a positive mindset because the first trial you will face is dealing with negative, cantankerous people. Mm. All 12 of these spies should be believing that God can work a miracle. Right. All 12 of them. You know why? They just seen. They just witnessed it. They literally just seen God drown Pharaoh, the greatest ruler of that time, in the Red Sea. They just witnessed it. Mm. Right, they just seen the 12 play. 10, 10, forgive me, she'll get, get me. 10. <laughs> get she, they just seen the frogs just come out of nowhere. Right. They just seen the water turn into blood. blood yep. They just seen Pharaoh drown. Right. And now they are the very single ones causing confusion mm. in the camp. Come on. The very ones that should be believing in your circle. On your team are the very ones that sometimes the enemy uses to break confusion. Man. That's why you so got to have true. a positive mindset. Yeah. And you got to stay before the Lord. Watch this. Because God can use anybody to bring confusion and yep. chaos yep. in the camp. Yep. These were hand-picked soldiers, hand-picked leaders from Moses. Moses was the baddest leader I ever walked on the planet. Uh -huh. mm. You can be ordained by leadership. Uh -huh. mm. Come on. Oh, I'm preaching up in here right now. Chosen by God and still be influenced and used by the devil. Right. The, so you think the devil needs you to rob banks no. to use you. Nope. And you think he needs you to sell drugs. He don't need all that stuff. All he needs you to do is have a negative mindset and he can shift the entire body by your small mindset. Mm. Come on, let's be real. See, you think because you're a Christian, the devil can't use you. I right. beg to differ with you. Right. Jesus told Peter, Satan, get thee behind us. Get behind me. Yep. Now we know Jesus can't lie. So if he said Satan, right. Come on. Satan was in the building. Right. You you don't have to be a worldly person to be used by the devil. Right. All you got to do is have a negative mindset and the enemy can use you to bring confusion and chaos in the body of Christ. Right. If you always find something wrong with everything, if you always complain with everything, if you always talk about how the mission is too hard and how this is too much, it is a sign you are being influenced by the devil. Mm. The Bible says nothing is impossible with God. So watch out for people who always talk about how hard it is and it's not God's timing and it's not God's will. It is a sign they have a spirit of rebellion and fear and witchcraft on them. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. They said the task was too hard. Watch out, Drew, for people who talk about how hard it is. Mm. Watch out for people who say it ain't time. Mm. Watch out for people who tell you it's too hard. 
It is a sign that they are speaking from a place of fear and rebellion and witchcraft. The enemy put fear in them to speak negative thoughts in them. Some of you, you got to understand when you are speaking doubt, when you are speaking confusion, the enemy is using you. That's why the Bible says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pleasing, think on these things. When you start speaking negative, you create room for the devil to use you. Mm, that's that's why you will not be talking about the leader and talking about the church, and I can give you scriptures for all of that. Because when you do that, you create room for the devil to use you. I know you ain't got nobody sitting beside you, but ask your chair, is the devil using you? Right. Are you speaking death more than you are life? Right. Are you talking about what you can't do more than what you can do? Right. You got to remember as a believer, you have the favor of God on your life. Isn't it funny how we forget about the favor of God so fast? Yeah. You just saw God do miracles and now you're already talking about you can't do it. Jesus, come on now. The Bible said it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Take the focus off your strength and start looking at God's strength. Yeah, yeah. You got to remember, you got the supernatural favor of God on your life. Have you ever bought a house? No, but it feels like a good thing to do it. Right. Have you ever defeated a giant? No, but it feels like a good day yeah. to try it. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever bought a company? No, but it feels like a good day to do it. Right. Stop being so cantankerous and negative and talking yourself out of the moment yeah. to do it. They were defeated before they ever started. And that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We are defeated before we ever start. The, the devil's using your own mouth to curse your blessings. Yeah. If God showed you you can do it, you can do it. God isn't a window shopper. If God showed you you can have a Gucci bag, you can have a Gucci bag. But you got to put in the work to do it, and you got to go after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me somebody. Yeah, amen. I ain't got to like me. These chairs like me. I pay these chairs to like me. I pay these chairs to watch me. I ain't worried about none of y'all. If y'all don't want this, to stay broke, stay sad, and stay depressed. But I'm getting ready to preach hell off your mind. You got to walk around saying, I am somebody. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. Y'all yeah. preacher's crazy, but I believe in him. Yeah. He can't really preach good, but he's got the anointing of God on his heart. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Gotta start speaking life. You gotta start speaking life in your family. If you want some marriage to be healed, just speak it over. Yeah. Speak your man blessed. Speak your woman blessed. Speak your church blessed. Speak your pastor blessed. Quit cursing what God wants you to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, somebody. You ain't walking in your blessings because your mouth. You done talked yourself out of your blessings. I can't do this and this is too hard and this is too long and this is too far. The devil is a lie. It's time to talk yourself into your favor. It's time to believe things that are not as though they work. Yo, and I'm just going to go ahead and say this. You want me to know why God told them to spy out the promised land? He wanted to see themselves in the land. In other words, he wanted them to see them, themselves being there before they was there. Mm. He wanted them to walk down the street and say, I belong here. And he wanted them to imagine themselves already in the land. Mm. Hey! Yes! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So you believe in God for a house. Can I ask you a question? When is the last time you drove down the street that is your dream neighborhood right. and said, I'm going to live here one day? Right. Yep. Are you spending any gas money on your dreams? When is the last time you rode down a community and said, I'm going to live here one right. day? Before we moved in Sunnyvale, you remember we were riding down the streets of Sunnyvale and the very street. here one day. About five years later, we bought our first house for $50,000. While we was at the closing cost, I had an investor say, I want to buy the house. I said, I can't sell this house right now. It is my blessing. It is my breakthrough. Are you spending gas on your dreams? If you, when is the last time you drove down your dream neighborhood and said I'm supposed to be here? You know why God wants 
you to see it because if you can see it, you can be it. Yeah. If you can say it, you can become it. Yeah. You know why the dealership always says before any paperwork, just come test drive the car. Right. Just come test drive it. Just come test drive it. They are taught that because if you can see yourself in the car, the paperwork and the price won't scare you away. Yeah. Right. If a dealership can use the imagination yeah. to talk you in a car, yeah. how much more can the Spirit of the Lord? Yeah. yeah. What are you imagining this year? When is the last time you believe in God for a mall that you went and laid hands on the mall and claimed that thing? I don't know about you, but I'm getting ready to take over some territories. I'm getting ready to take over some cities. God wants you to imagine it before it ever happens. Mm. That's why the word says, write the vision down and make it plain. Amen. Believe it before it's believable. Amen. See it before it's seeable. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. When is the last time you spent five dollars on gas money just so you can drive down your dream neighborhood? Or have you ever even driven down your dream neighborhood? He said, spy out the promised land. Because I need to, you to already see yourself there before you're there. Right. I'm preaching up in here. I'm preaching up in here. I'm preaching up in here. If you're going to get in shape, then imagine it. Go to the gym and sit in the parking lot and start imagining yourself in there drinking water and sweating in the sauna room. Come on. The Bible says, okay, speak those things that are not as though they were. Your imagination is holding you back. You are defeated before you even start. This is a year to take your territory. This is a year to be tough. This is a year to be aggressive. This is your year to go after it. If he showed it to you, then why are you playing games? If he showed it to you, then pursue it. Somebody shout amen, somebody. Amen. amen. If I ask you for your vision right now, could you show it to me? Mm. Could you show it to me? Amen. And then can you show me the steps to get to the end? Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. You want God to bless you and you ain't got nothing to bless. Come on, somebody. You asking God to bless, and He said, What you want me to bless? You ain't doing nothing. You ain't moving nothing. You ain't pursuing nothing. Caleb silenced the voices, and He said, Let us go up at once. You got to go after it. You got to pursue it. And you got to silence every voice that don't line up with the will of God. Just because somebody is a leader, it don't mean you let them speak in your life. Right. If it ain't lining up with the word, then silence the voice. He silenced the voice. You want me to tell you why we're not walking in favor? We got too many voices speaking in our life. Right. You cannot let every pastor and every leader speak in your life. If they ain't doing it, then they can't tell you how to do it. If they ain't living holy, they can't teach you how to live holy. You got to live it first in your own life before you can get it in somebody else's. And it's time for y'all to pursue your promise. It's time for you to get out of your spectator attitude and go after the promises of God and go after the supernatural favor of God. You've been a spectator and a hater for too long. It's time to be a participator. Yes, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, somebody. I'm ready to preach this word today. I'm ready to preach this word today. I'm ready to preach this word today. I'm ready to go after the promises of God. I'm ready to be all God's called me to be. I ain't got time to speculate nothing no more. Amen. I'm ready to pursue my promises. Thank you, Lord. It's time to be tough. If you're going to walk in the favor of God, you got to be tough. Yes. Well, God is love. Come on. And God is gentle. Come on. And God is kind. Right. And God is nice. All right. And God is love. All right. And God is gentle. And God is kind. You know why you, that's all you can preach about is God is love and God is gentle and God is kind and God is patient? It's because you preach it from a broken place. Oh. Mm. God isn't just gentle and kind. He is also a consuming fire. Yes. He ain't just gentle and kind. Well, you know, God's gentle and God's kind and we shouldn't be so aggressive with the people. We shouldn't be so aggressive and so hard. You speaking from a broken place. You speaking from a wounded place. God is tough. When they were trading in the tabernacle, y'all remember that? Jesus flipped the table upside down. 
And he flipped the chairs upside down. God ain't just love and gentle and patience and kind. He's tough. And if you're going to take territory, you got to be tough. You know why I kick the chairs upside down? Because you cannot be gentle with spirits. Right, right. You can be gentle with people, but not the spirits that manipulate the people. Come on. See, we always post some scriptures about God is love and God is gentle, God is kind. And I'm good with that and I agree with that. But the Bible also said there's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Right. Sometimes you got to be tough. Sometimes you got to be bold. Sometimes you got to be aggressive. You can't. You cannot argue with evil spirits. Right. Caleb silenced the voice because you cannot argue with evil spirits. You try to argue with somebody that is gifted to argue. He silenced the voice because you cannot argue with spirits, and that's your problem. You're trying to argue out, argue the devil. That's what he does. He's Lucifer. He is the trickster. He is the manipulator. When somebody is operating under witchcraft, you don't argue with them. You silence the voice. Yeah. And follow yeah, yeah. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop trying to out argue the devil and get in the presence of God. It's time to be tough. But I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You ain't got to be rude to the person, but you got to take authority over that spirit. Yeah. That's manipulating that person's mind. Yeah. I ain't being rough with you, but there is a spirit. The spirit is tormenting your mind. And I got to send it back to the gates of hell. Jesus flipped the table over. He flipped the chairs over. Because if you're going to take territory, you got to be tough. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. Be passive and sissified. And God, if it's your will, I hope this is going to work. And God, if it's your will, I need you to send it in a mailbox. No, you got to kick some stuff down. Yeah. You got to be tough. You say, well, Pastor Doug, you're preaching too tough. You got to understand, I'm preaching spirits off your mind. Bro. Yeah. That's why I'm preaching like I'm tough right now. I ain't just preaching to you. When I'm preaching to you, I'm nice. Y'all know I'm nice at the church. I hug you, keep you loving. I know all they love and love stuff, but right now I'm preaching hell off your mind. Yeah. I'm preaching witches off your mind. I'm preaching spirits off your mind. You know why you get mad when I'm preaching like this and talk about you need to get your life in order? It's a spirit that don't want to turn you loose. Yeah. That's why you mad as hell in the car on the way home. It's a spirit tormenting you. I should be able to tell you to clean your house and you get the broom out. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But the reason my sermons make you mad is because I'm preaching the word of God and the anointing of God has been sent to destroy the yoke of the enemy. The reason you ride home mad every Sunday is because the fire of God is chasing every devil and every demon and every witch off your mind and the devil don't want to turn you loose. That's why you're mad at work. How in the world you going to go to bed tired and wake up tired? It's a spirit on you. How in the world you going to go to bed tired and then wake up angry? You just got sleep. You shouldn't be angry. But it's a spirit tormenting your mind, tormenting your life. That's why you're dreaming about sex all the time. Sex in the morning, sex in the night, haunting you. But I came to let every witch know you have to go in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I wish you would try to curse me. If you will sprinkle some blood around me, then get the chicken. Let's try yeah. together because I'm going to be all God's called me to be. I ain't scared of no guys, I ain't scared of no devils. Which, talk about me if you want to Try to curse me if you want to But you cannot stop What God is blessing For if God be for me He is more than the world right. against me right. I ain't never found a witch That can stop the power right. of God I ain't never found a spell That can stop the power of God right. Yeah, yeah, yeah Come off no mind yeah. You walk in the favor Somebody give God yeah. A holy ghost yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The reason the devil won't leave your life is you playing games with it. You listen to Jesus one minute and Beyonce the next. You got your brain confused. You got your mind confused. You're playing with witches. You're playing with spirits. I don't care. Don't let them like me. You can't listen to Jesus all day and Lil Wayne the next. Yeah. No confusion in your mind. If you're going to be a worship leader, then be a worship leader. 
David said it from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. I will bless his holy name. You can't be a worship leader and a hookup on the side. You got to be all the way in, all the way out. God said, I wish that you was hot or cold. I'm sick and tired of God raising people up and then you get famous and you walk in the promises of God and then you fall a year later. The devil is alive. That is not pleasing unto God. That is not bringing God glory. But you're playing with witches and you're playing with demons. Can't have silence the voice. You got to get every devil in hell out of your life. Every witch, every warlock. Stop letting everybody mentor you and speak in your life. If they ain't living in this, stop following. Yeah. Your life to give you a platform. God don't need that. No. 
God is the platform. God is your hookup. Yeah. We got too many artists and too many Christians. You work with anybody to get to the next level. And when you do that, you take God out of the equation. Right. Right. You ain't got to work with a drug dealer and let him be on your album so you can get sales. Right. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lord. frustrated spirits are tormenting your mind the Bible says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength when you wake up in the morning you should have joy Yeah. you should have strength you should be ready to take over nations you should be ready to take over cities but some of y'all are playing with devils that's why you ain't got no joy you ain't got no peace they were intimidated by the giants of the land and it took their strength and it took their joy and it took their peace some of y'all we are playing with things that's still in your joy and still in your peace and still in your anointing I'm telling you you should go to bed at night with joy and peace and happiness yeah. because of the goodness of God Yes. and then you should wake up ready to take over the city take over the mall take over the country take over the nation take over the church but you're tired you're right because you let things influence you that have no business speaking in your life. He silenced the voice and he left them behind. There will be a separation if you're truly submitted to the will of God. There will be a separation. He silenced them and left them all behind. A sign that you're truly submitted to God is you go through a season of separation. You know why everybody can't come to this church yet? God separating the real from the fake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because this church is small, and if you fake, you're going to get noticed. You can't have right. many folks up in here. Right. You're going to get caught. You're just going to get caught. And, and I ain't against big churches. I want a big church one day. But we're not going to go to big churches because you can hide. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm scrolling on your Facebook to see if you're living in sin. Right. <laughs> Come on. You should want that from a leader. Yeah, yeah. You should want a pastor that will get on your nerves and put you in your place and say, pull your pants up. God's trying to take you to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to run the country and I can still see your boxers. Stop right. it. Right. Let me get on your nerves and tell you to pull your drawers up. Come on, somebody. I know you can't take your back. I'm trying to get them to the next level. Yeah. Y'all, I ain't going to be no way. And they ain't happy neither. Right. Right. We're going to preach the word here. We're going to speak life. Is it going to hurt? Yes. Is it going to cut? Yes. But you got to allow God to stretch you. Yeah. Amen. Surgery, Lord. He put Jesus on the cross mm. and nailed big nails in each wrist. Mm. God did this to his own son. Golly. God did this to his own son. You said God would never ask that much out of me. <laughs> God told Abraham, <laughs> Abraham, offer up your son. Right. Your only son. Right. As a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, mm. 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Come on. In the Old Testament, they would tie the bulls and the rams to the altar alive. Mm. You got to allow God to tie you to something. Yeah. It's killing you. Killing your flesh. Killing your pride. Killing your arrogance. When I tell you to be here on time, it's because God's about to take you to the next level. Yeah. In your own life. Mm. Tied to something that's killing my flesh. Tied to a leader that gets on my nerves. If you ain't tied to something that's killing you, you ain't totally surrendered and submitted to the will of God. If your leader is your best friend, he ain't your leader. Mm. He's your best friend. Yeah. God is about to raise up some people in this last day. And it ain't going to be because you're talented. It ain't going to be because you're gifted. It ain't going to be because you dance and sing. It's going to be because you're submitted to God. You're holy and you're separated. You made a decision to live holy. You're willing to give up your life so that he can be glorified through you.